popovers can be real tricky. And using a random recipe to make popovers and expecting success is kind of like using scratch lottery tickets as your retirement plan. <laughs> things are not going to work out for you. Well, Julie is here and things are working out for us because she's going to show us popover perfection. <laughs> no pressure on my part, no. Just, just <laughs> perfection. That's all we expect. Okay. Well, the thing about popovers is that it's a very simple recipe. In fact, this batter only has four ingredients. And so with simple recipes, the devil is in the details and you have to get each part right. Okay. So starting with the pan. Now this is a popover pan. This recipe is really foolproof. If you didn't have this, you could use a muffin tin uh, and that would make 12 and you'd have to adjust the cooking time a little bit, but it totally works. Popover pans, however, give you those really tall popovers, which is kind of a hallmark. I sprayed this popover pan with some vegetable oil spray, and I'm wiping most of it out. You just want a nice thin layer, almost like seasoning a cast iron pan. You're just yeah. seasoning the popover tins. All right, so that's set aside, ready to go. Now, this is one and a half cups of 2% milk. And now we're gonna heat it up. We want the batter to be on the warm side. That'll help you get that rise in the oven. Okay. Moving on to the flour. We're gonna use bread flour here. Bread flour has more protein, more gluten, so it makes taller popovers that also are a bit more crisp. You need the stretch. That's it. Now we could measure the flour using the standard dip and sweep method. That'd be like one and a quarter cups. But in this recipe, when there's so few ingredients, weighing it really takes a lot of the guesswork out. So it's six and three quarters of an ounce of flour. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Into this goes three quarters of a teaspoon of table salt. I'm gonna whisk that in. All right, so flour, salt, milk, last but not least, eggs. This is three large eggs. Now, a lot of recipes make this batter in the blender, but we saw no reason to dirty that pan. It's just as easy to make this in a liquid measuring cup, because then you can easily pour it into the popover pan. You are the blender. <laughs> exactly. All right, so three eggs into the liquid. All right, so the milk is right in that sweet spot of 110 to 120. I'm gonna add this to the flour. It means such a simple batter. All right, into the prepared popover pans it goes. This is so much safer too, because a lot of recipes will start with a super hot pan, oh. hot fat in the bottom of the pan, almost like a Yorkshire pudding. Mm -hmm. All right, that's six nice big popovers. All right, so these popovers are ready for the oven. Now, a lot of recipes crank the oven at the beginning to get that first puff sure. and then turn the oven down so they cook through. But we found that really isn't a reliable recipe for multiple ovens because different ovens act differently. So using a steady 400 degree oven temp for 40 to 45 minutes is perfect. You are breaking all the rules. <laughs> a rebel. Will you help me get the oven door? Sure will. All right, pull that out for you. Oh, full service. The hallmark of popovers is the steamy airspace inside them. After the batter is placed in a hot oven, the first thing to happen is that the proteins on the surface are set into a solid but stretchy skin-like layer. As the water in the batter turns to steam, it begins to expand and inflate the popover. Eventually, the once stretchy surface becomes a crisp, rigid shell, which prohibits any further inflation. Our pre-warmed batter ensures that the steaming and inflation process happens more quickly than when using a chilled batter. And the result is steamy, airy, lifted popovers. Mm. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. I know. Wow. I know, right? Talk about a statement. <laughs> I know, just so impressive. I mean, this is, this is a restaurant quality. All right, we're gonna get them right out of the hot pan. Oh, oh. oh yes, Whew. hot pop over. Aren't they gorgeous? And they come right out of the pan so easily. Oh my goodness. All right, gotta eat them while they're hot, you know? That is the law. <laughs> and the thing is, there's no butter in the batter, which means you can put a little extra <laughs> butter on now and be totally okay. These are great because you're supposed to serve them nice and hot. Oh, and then you break it open. Break it open. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that custardy inside. All right. Schmear and this there. is good butter. Yes, it is. Mm. You can imagine this with a nice hearty stew in the dead of winter when it's freezing mm. outside. Mm. It's just so comforting. These are popover perfection. You delivered, <laughs> and you broke all the rules. I did. <laughs> Thanks, Julia. Anytime. So if you want to make the ultimate statuesque 
crisp popovers at home. Heat the milk to create a warm batter, use bread flour for structure, and bake at 400 degrees. So from America's Test Kitchen, lofty, statuesque, voluminous perfection, no fail popovers. And you can get this recipe and all the recipes this season along with product reviews and select episodes from our website. That's americastestkitchen.com slash TV. Love how you have a little butter lake going in there. I've got a butter lake <laughs> and you don't. I'm a little jealous. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> See, this is butter gravy boat. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later. <laughs>